all you said, it allows me to do more with my life. And that's everything. I, I want to hear you talk more about that in a way that can paint a picture for people of what the possibilities of health are, because I do believe convenience is a big factor. But I think in our culture, food as entertainment is another factor. And when people consider the possibility of eliminating these toxic foods from their diet, it almost seems like, well, what do I have to live for? Mm -hmm. Because food is really a major part of going out, enjoying life, enjoying friends and having fun. What can life look like when you eliminate the foods by which we have previously defined fun and fulfillment? Yeah, that's such an important point. So I'll have to, I'll address it sequentially. If you choose to make food entertainment, that's your quality of life equation right mm -hmm. there. And you will almost certainly sacrifice optimal health. Mm. And so if you choose to make optimal health, and that's such a wishy-washy, hand-wavy term, I, I should find something better. But if you really want fullness of life, then, I mean, in, for me, it's, I'm 45 years old. I want to surf when I'm 85. I'm not married. You know, I want a relationship. I want to have kids, kids at 45. They're going to be 15 when I'm 60 right? Mm. If I had kids this year, I want to be able to surf with them all my life. Like, that's what it means for me. Like, I want vitality as long as I can get it out of life. And I remember meeting you guys, I don't know, four years ago. Yeah. And yeah. like, since then, I, I feel like a lot of people or some people have benefited from what I do. And I feel a responsibility to keep doing it. Mm. I want clarity of mind so I can keep doing something that I feel responsible to keep doing because maybe I can say something in a unique way that, that adds value to the world. And so I think that a lot of us don't understand our potential as humans and don't understand our physical potential, uh, our romantic potential, our philosophical potential, our intellectual potential, the, the things we can do in the world. And for me, those have always been the most important things. And I, maybe I'm an ascetic with this in philosophically, but I would always sacrifice enjoyment to be able to do those things better. I, I mean, this is going to sound silly, but I would eat dog shit if it were good for me, right? I would mm. eat something that was completely not enjoyable. I like that. And maybe I'm just wired differently than most people, but I choose to not use food as entertainment. That single choice is probably one of the greatest choices you can make because if you, and I've met a lot of people who who think that way, who think, I I want to go out to restaurants and, 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 eat, and eat food and that's my joy in life. Well, great. But if you run into problems with that, it's, it's, it's going to limit you. It's, it's definitely yeah. a, I think it's a Faustian bargain, but only if somebody wants to do other things and, and, and makes a quality of life equation solution that's different than that. But it, it's, it's a tricky thing because that's very limiting yeah, <laughs> because yeah. if you use food as entertainment, you <clears throat> will not, you will not like making intentional food choices. You will just want to use food as entertainment. I think it's, I think it's valid, but it's not how I choose to do it. And I think yeah. most people are leaving a lot on the table in terms of all of the aspects of their life, but that's their choice. Yeah. And I appreciate how ecumenical, respectful, open-minded, and tolerant you're being as you express this. I'll, I'll say something to that effect um, from a personal standpoint. Um, my, my mom went for a walk with my wife and I when she visited us. And um, she says, you all do this a lot? And I says, yeah, we take a walk together every day. And she said, keep doing that, baby. Mm -hmm. Keep doing it. And I knew where my mom was speaking from. I was She was speaking from the fact that those days are gone for her and my dad. Mm -hmm. My dad's still alive. I love him very much and he's still around, but taking walks with my pop, that ain't happening anymore. Mm. And so even though it's okay or permissible to define quality of life by saying, well, you know what? My joy is food. When we think about the elements that make that fun, it's things like being able to get in the car and drive to a restaurant. It's like being able to get out of the car by yourself on your own strength and walk to the movie theater where you're going to eat that popcorn and drink that soda. And if you take away all those things because you don't want to let go of the sodas or the popcorn, you eventually lose those things too. Mm. And we take for granted all of the different ways in which health, the ability to move around, the ability to stay awake, the ability to focus your attention on something for two hours and have an active mind so you can discuss it when it's over. Our health determines our ability to enjoy those things too. So even Everything. if you say, I just like yeah. to go to restaurants yeah. and eat, well, you got to watch what you eat in order to be able to do that when you're 60, 70, and 80. Because yeah. people lose that. Dude, when Josh and I wrote uh, Minimalism, Live a Meaningful Life, and we talk about, you know, the five different valleys, health is like, that's the first thing we talk about. Yeah. Like without your health, you really don't have anything. Yeah, we don't have much. I mean, I, you remind me of my dad. 72 years old, he's a physician, and he's he's kind of living in a prison of his own creation. Mm. He's 
kyphotic, which means his spine is curving in. He, his posture isn't good. He has no glute muscles. Mm. He, he has spinal stenosis. Um, he, he can't do much of anything. And he's probably not going to come to Costa Rica to see how I live there. My mom wants to come, but he's not going to be able to get on a plane and come to Costa Rica and see where I live. I don't even know how much of his grandchildren he'll see if I have grandchildren in Costa Rica, mm -hmm. right? So he's, he's, he's an illustration, kind of like maybe your dad a little bit, you know? And, yeah. and my dad grew up and, and worked as a physician and, and he didn't prioritize the health. He kind of let it slide and he has his own trauma. We talked about trauma a little earlier. I think he has his own traumas. And for him, using food was therapy because it was the only thing he was allowed to do. He's told me that was fun. Mm. And so it's put him in this prison of his own making and it, it's not so fun for him anymore in yeah, life. Yeah. It's kind of a bummer because yeah. he can't he can't do much. Even mm. if I say to him, hey dad, let me fly you to Costa Rica. I want to take you to the beach. He couldn't do it. Mm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy this standalone Patreon highlight? If so, you can listen to full episodes of the Minimalist Private Podcast, available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash the minimalists or click the link in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.